everybody, welcome back to the Golden Bolt, and welcome to the first episode in over a month that doesn't involve Shrek. God, that feels really good to say. Now, this week we're playing a download game, the first time I don't have a case to hold up for the game I'm showing, so I'll just put a little logo right here like I'm holding it up anyway. We will be playing Epic Dumpster Bear on the Nintendo Wii U. Is it a diamond in the rough, or should you just toss it in the trash? Let's find out. Is that a good pun? I don't... That wasn't really good. Should we... Should we cut that? No? Move in? Okay. So where do you find history on an unknown indie game? Naturally, by going right to the source. I spoke with Ron, the developer of the game, over at Log Games, about his game and how it came about. Ron always knew he really wanted to work on a momentum-based 2D platforming game in the style of Mario or Sonic, so before he even got around to the visual side, he focused on ironing out the controls. Unlike many Unity games, this game makes exclusive use of in-house code. There are no outside engines powering Dumpster Bear. Once he nailed down the controls, since he, by admission, isn't an artist, Ron looked to the Unity asset library. He tested out several different animals, but once he rigged up the bear model, it looked so ridiculous that right then and there, he knew that was his protagonist. From there, he continued digging through assets to find enemies and blocks to fit his level themes, while also bringing on independent musician Mike Petri to do the soundtrack for the game. The name Dumpster Bear actually has two origins. One, there was an issue at the time in his community with bears digging through the trash, and two, the game was sort of a dumpster dive for assets, if you will, and by his own admission it looked, well, garbagey. From there, he added a ridiculous anti-corporation theme to have a little fun with it, and added the word Epic to poke fun at Epic Mickey. After about a year of development, Epic Dumpster Bear was released exclusively on the Wii U in April of 2016. Ron chose the Wii U because he was a huge Nintendo fan, and he felt it was a good fit since the Wii U didn't have many games at the time. Moreover, he even added in bonus levels that made use of the gamepad, because he felt developers weren't integrating the controller enough. That's right, a one-man indie developer used the gamepad more than Nintendo themselves. The game follows Dumpster Bear, who's just a bear. Corporations have destroyed his home and forced him to eat out of dumpsters to survive. One day he decides enough is enough and vows to take vengeance on those responsible. In his way sit countless obstacles, but Dumpster Bear isn't afraid. The B was brainwashed by corporate interests. Well, maybe he should run for office. The game isn't even trying to take itself seriously when it comes to the story, and I love it for that. Lines like that are just hilarious, and the over-the-top style made me look forward to progressing more in this game. It starts off ridiculous and only gets more so. By the end, you're in f***ing space, destroying a corporate space station and fighting a space dragon. Whatever that is. I don't even care. I love it. There are even these little pieces of bear-themed information on the loading screens, which add an extra little bit of charm. The story of a 2D platformer is usually meant as a catalyst to keep you playing, something to keep you going forward. Dumpster Bear's story did that for me. That said, just like I did with the 2D Mario games, I won't be giving this game's plot a score. It's only fair. Epic Dumpster Bear is a 2D platformer heavily inspired by the Mario series. You can tell that right away just by how the levels are designed. They're very simple, blocky levels that focus on tight platforming within the game's core mechanics. Dumpster Bear can run, jump, wall jump, and even grind on rails. He can only take two hits before he dies, although if you want to spend some coins on harder levels, you can buy an extra third hit, though that only lasts for one use. Just like the later 2D Mario games, there's one checkpoint in most levels, which both hides any tedium that would come from death, and does a great job allowing the levels to flesh out a bit compared to if we had no checkpoints at all. That basic synopsis is pretty much all you're going to be doing throughout this whole game. That's not to say there aren't a couple of gimmicks, there are, such as a bomb power-up that functions like the Fire Flower, a set of wings that allows Dumpster Bear to fly and throw fireballs for some reason, and a fart power-up that gives Dumpster Bear the ability to double jump. However, the power-ups are used sparingly, almost too sparingly, honestly. Almost all of the game's 50 or so main levels are just Dumpster Bear with his basic abilities, with the power-ups being relegated to their own levels or the boss fights. I almost wish we had more levels that made use of those power-ups, because there was a lot of room for experimentation on that front. I was totally expecting a bullet hell auto-scrolling section with the wings power-up, but I never got one. On top of the power-up specific levels, there are also some puzzle levels that make use of the Wii U's gamepad. These are pretty fun as well. 
Each one has four color-coded objects that you can activate or deactivate, and the objects vary based on the world you're in. They may start as platforms that you have to activate to move, but by the end you're playing with portals. They're a nice side dish to the main course, but nothing more than that really. Even if you do include those extra things, you're probably thinking that this game sounds too basic, and you'd be wrong. The level designs start simple, but the game constantly expands using those four basic mechanics. In short time, you're going from your basic platforming levels to sprinting through a castle at a lightning pace. Mario becomes Sonic. Speed is an entirely optional beast here, but it's when you're going fast that you realize just how well made this game is. The levels, just like Sonic, albeit to a lesser extent, usually have a more difficult upper path that cuts down on time if you can manage to stay up there. Hell, just like Sonic, this game has bumpers that knock Dumpster Bear around, which he can use to bounce towards alternate paths as well. The more difficult paths are incredibly tight, I'm talking one block wide platforms sometimes, but when you're in the moment you never sweat about it. The levels are so meticulously made that you get a feeling of euphoria when you're blasting through them. Each level truly feels like a progression from the last, and each world introduces new concepts and new enemies. Now, many of these obstacles are clearly inspired by Mario, such as fire bars, hammer bro mummies, and flames that jump out of lava, but many of them are also on the unique side, like corporate drones, corporate drones that carry cows, and the cover for an Event Sevenfold album. By the time you're in the space station dodging Tesla coils, lasers, and missiles, you feel like a pro. Perhaps an even better indicator of how solid this game feels to play is in the player's muscle memory. It's nuts how easy this game is to pick back up. There aren't many games I can put down and then come back to later without losing a step. I had to put the game down for about a week two different times during my recording of Dumpster Bear, and as soon as I picked it back up, I immediately felt one with the bear. There was no warm-up phase like I have with many great platformers. I could just go and trust myself and the game's mechanics. One of the only mechanical complaints I have about this game, though, is a tiny nitpick with the wall jump. In this game, you have to hold in the direction of the wall you're on, not in the direction you're jumping towards. If you switch directions before you jump, Dumpster Bear lets go of the wall he's on, which is a bit counterintuitive compared to many platformers, and led to a couple of deaths early on. It's something I got used to over time, but it still felt a bit off. The same goes for the timing of moving objects and enemies. The movements of platforms and such don't always seem to be synced up correctly, so at times you have to wait for several seconds until things line up right for you, which just kills your sense of momentum. It doesn't happen all that often, but it's really noticeable on levels with a lot of moving parts. The only other thing mechanically that I could complain about is a tiny hitbox issue. The game will take you out of the crouch state immediately when you let go of the analog stick, as opposed to taking you out when your uncrouch animation is finished. That means Dumpster Bear will take damage if there's something right above him, despite him not actually standing when he's hit by it. Also, if you just winced a tiny bit when I mentioned an analog stick, yes, I use an analog stick for this game. It's one of the only platformers I'll ever use a stick for, because here, the precision isn't based on the spacing your character has, but more in the momentum he has while getting to that spacing. Even with a momentum-based platformer like the classic Sonic games, I would never be caught dead using an analog stick because those games are still focused on spacing precision. But with Dumpster Bear's momentum, it just feels right because I know I can fine-tune my landings on the fly without risking any imprecision. For most of the journey, it's you, Dumpster Bear, and your skills. And those skills can pay off if you go for the collectibles this game has to offer. In addition to the coins sprinkled throughout the levels, there are three red coins hidden in most levels, which are similar to the Yoshi coins in the Mario games or the red rings in the more recent Sonic games. They're usually hidden behind a speed-based upper path or a platforming challenge, and getting them is so satisfying. So satisfying, in fact, that I went out of my way to get almost all of them on my first playthrough of each level. When you beat a level, you'll get one salmon, and when you get all three red coins, you'll get a second salmon for that level. There are a total of 148 salmon in the game to collect. Some levels also have portals hidden inside that unlock extra bonus levels. Additionally, each regular level has this target at the end that Dumpster Bear jumps onto, sort of like the flagpole in Mario. You're given a score based on where you land on that target, and you unlock Miiverse stamps as your overall target score grows. They don't affect anything else, but it's a nice bonus for those that want to go for full completion. The only truly major complaint I have about this game is the boss fights. There are six boss fights in total, and they're some of the easiest boss fights I've ever seen, to the point that they feel pointless gameplay-wise. I'm glad they exist because of the story side of things, but almost all of them boil down to running away, throwing bombs at him, and repeating until he's dead. 
The hardest one is the wolf boss in World 2, because you have to hit him by jumping on him while dodging around fireballs that are floating back and forth on each platform. Even then, the wolf AI's pathing is incredibly stupid. He just paces back and forth, jumping occasionally. With everything else being so wonderfully designed in each world leading up to the boss fight, the fights themselves end things on a low point. The sign of a great platformer is that it leaves you satisfied, but also wanting more. I want more Epic Dumpster Bear. The mechanics felt so crisp and made with love that I got a bit sad when I got to the end of the game. The only complaints I have about the game are mostly nitpicks. To add one more nitpick, I do wish there was some sort of time trial mode or a bonus for beating a level under a certain time. The game's wonderful use of momentum at times feels a tiny bit betrayed without it. Otherwise, the game is a total shock to me, because just by looking at it, I wouldn't expect this game to be so well made, and I definitely wouldn't expect that Dumpster Bear would become one of my favorite platforming characters in terms of control. That said, even if the complaints are mostly nitpicks, there were quite a few of them, and with the boss issue present on top of the many tiny complaints, I can't brush them all aside. So with that said, I'm giving Epic Dumpster Bear a silver bolt for its gameplay. Okay, okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. This game doesn't look good. Everything about the game screams Unity Engine quite clearly. To go on a tangent for a moment, as somebody who's designed a couple minor games in the past despite having zero artistic talent, I know how tough it is. Either you're stuck with horrible assets you make yourself, subpar assets you find in a library like Unity, or you're bottlenecked by having to wait on an artist to get the assets done for you, and that's if you know or can afford an artist. I personally empathize, but I can't let that affect my critical judgment of the game. That said, the experience visually is surprisingly cohesive when it comes to story. Yeah, I'm not really sure why mummies are attacking Dumpster Bear, are they brainwashed by corporate interests too? But most of the time, things feel like they fit where you are. That's not true of most Unity games, so I have to give some credit where it's due. The Asian temple world having walking bats and a Ven Sevenfold is… kinda weird though. But yes, to be blunt, the game looks ugly. I personally see that as part of the charm. I mean, just look at how Dumpster Bear runs. He's so doofy, it's friggin' adorable. How can you not love that run animation? Realistically, I'd have to give the game a bronze bolt if we were looking at just the graphics. But we can't ignore the audio. Okay, the audio also looks like it's taken from Unity. Let me specify further. We can't ignore the soundtrack. This game has an excellent custom-made soundtrack, and it shines. From the first world's upbeat, banjo-filled theme to the epic Space Station synth track, every theme matches the world it's from. And more importantly, each theme is driving. It doesn't let a song's speed get overwhelming, which could pressure the player subliminally to keep going, even if they're not ready to go. Instead, each theme hits perfectly and drives them to want to move forward, to want to clear that next obstacle, to want to stop evil corporate greed. It's… I can't say enough to compliment this soundtrack. Obviously though, the visuals are objectively going to bring things down a bit, even if I personally see charm in them. That combined with the couple bugs and oversights I experienced throughout my playthrough, such as the game's audio completely cutting out two or three times, makes it tough to give the game a great score for its presentation. I'm gonna go with a silver bolt for this one. This game surprised me, it really did. When I found this game, I was just perusing through the eShop sales and bought it on a whim as a joke. I figured 5 bucks couldn't hurt for a game titled Epic Dumpster Bear. And it didn't hurt, I'm glad I picked this game up. Somehow Dumpster Bear gave me a renewed appreciation for control in platformers, and furthered the appreciation for good, solid momentum in them as well. So much so that I feel like I have to go back and give another momentum-based franchise another fair shot. If you're a fan of platformers, I strongly urge you to pick up Epic Dumpster Bear. Graphics aren't everything, and this game screams that at the top of its lungs. You can pick it up on the Wii U eShop for around 8 bucks normally, though it might occasionally be on sale for about 5. And speaking of that momentum-based platformer I mentioned a moment ago, I think it's time I stop putting it off. So join me next week when I tackle Sonic the Hedgehog. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you like the person making the video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching as always, and stay golden.